Hello students, so today we are going to talk about Team 3 Energy and Sustainability of Life So this video just will be a short video on it So according to the Malaysia law, the installation of smoke detector in buildings such like hospital, hotel, supermarket uh, contains small amount of radioactive substance Name this radioactive substance What is the importance of radioactive substance in our daily life? Okay, so for example, for this question, uh, name the radioactive. Uh, yeah. Name the radioactive substance in a uh, smoke detector. So, in case you want to know this answer, you can just go Google type. Now, Google is your teacher, right? So, Google is very important. Just type uh, radioactive in Google, uh, substance. Um, in smoke detector okay this is how you use um, google to find your answer so you will get your answer is called americium 241 okay so this will be the answer so this americium 241 is to detect smoke Okay, so to detect smoke lah. What is the important handling of radiant and substance effectively? So now Malaysia also we start to study radioactive, right? You can go Google and check. Um actually Malaysia is studying. I think in the future Malaysia will use radioactive to produce electrical energy. But of course a lot of Malaysian people don't know or they don't want. Why? Because for example like Japan or Chernobyl, the nuclear reactor explode, boom. Okay, boom, explode and we scared if Malaysia do also Malaysia thing will explode. Um personally I'm a science teacher lah, so I think it is a good thing. Lah. First I think it's a good thing. It save a lot of cost, lah. save a lot of money, produce a lot of electric. Of course, this thing you there's a lot of safety measure. First thing first is this thing cannot put near people house. It must put far far away from the house. In case it explode, no people will die. Like if I'm not mistaken, the Japanese nuclear reactor explode, uh, no people die. The reason it explode because they got the in case no electric uh, they need to make sure that is electric. So they got safety electric put on the floor. They put on the floor the safety level. So in case me of 10 uh, they got the electric on the floor to make the nuclear reactor cold. You need to make it cold so that it won't explode. But during the tsunami time, the water actually flood the T sun. So the electric spoil, the backup spoil, the electric also spoil. So these two things spoil the reactor become hot and then it explodes. So now I think they were smart lah. They won't put this spare battery down on the floor. Maybe they put on top, okay? In case tsunami water come uh, then the the thing here spoil electric no more then it will explode. So now now it's getting more high tech lah. Bill Gates now now it's Bill Gates do the nuclear reaction is very high tech. You know you should look at the documentary. Bill Gates do one now uh, cannot explode one. No matter what you do, maybe effort but little bit on it, it won't explode a lot. So this is the new technology of um radioactive and the nuclear energy to produce electric not very high tech already no no explore already but i don't know lah i'm talking about buildings nuclear reactor lah malaysia one i i don't know lah electric and magnetism um of course malaysia malaysia is using a lot of electric and what is the main electric in malaysia do you know what is the main electric source in malaysia a lot of people thought that use the water. Ah. A lot of people thought that Malaysia use a lot of uh, hydro energy. But actually it's wrong because actually Malaysia don't the main energy of Malaysia is actually burning of fossil fuel. Here I would say like this. Malaysia use more energy from the natural gas and petroleum. 
Okay, so the main um, electric is from Malaysia is actually um, burning of fossil fuel, which is actually not renewable and cause a lot of pollution, carbon dioxide and energy wasters. Expensive. TNB also very expensive. I don't know. But yeah, the TNB always cheap people money, right? Okay, um, did you know that our country, Malaysia, is country very successful in various energy? Yes, man! Ayyo, why the textbook say like that? La? Actually, I disagree. La. Ayya, textbook also want to say like that. Ayya. You can Google it. La. Malaysia use more than 50% is non-renewable energy. So, it is not successful. If successful, then we become like Japan. You want to talk about success? You compare with Japan, okay? Japan use solar energy. You compare with a country. Um, what the energy sources use in Malaysia? Ah, you didn't say, yeah. You say lah, say lah. You didn't say. <laughs> it's burning of fossil fuel actually. Okay, so this one I just Google it. I just Google electric energy from Malaysia, and the first information I see is. Here say, forty percent of electric generation is by natural. Forty percent is by coal. Coal. So actually, forty percent already by coal. Coal is here burning of coal here. Malaysia already used forty percent is here. So actually, it's really not successful. So I don't know why the book say successful lah. It don't explain. So if you say successful. Then you explain lah. <laughs> I don't know how to explain this one. Lah. Electric and electricity. Then suddenly they ask, electricity is generated through various energy sources. The energy sources can be classified into renewable and non-renewable. So this one you know already, right? Standard six you already learn in uh, renewable and non-renewable. Malaysia is currently the leading country in biomass industry in Southeast Asia, Sabah and Sarawak. In Malaysia, there are variety of large amount of biomass. The variety of biomass of palm oil, forest, beside the generation of biomass is also used to produce innovative products. So you know biomass, right? Biomass is renewable. Biomass is you use the cow dung, you use the the palm anything like you don't want organic thing you don't want ready you put put on the floor there's a tanki like in the floor put then after that it will produce gas so the gas you can use for cooking for whatever thing like huh, that you can burn so here say malaysia is the leading country in south asia this one may be correct lah because you are talking about biomass ma. so i think this one is correct lah um, but for this one, I think not correct lah. <laughs> if you want to compare with other country, um, hybrid power station in Pulau Penang, Kenja, Terengganu, energy, energy source, wind, solar, diesel. So very beautiful picture ah. But again, forty percent Malaysia use is non renewable. But if I check in the Google now, so here say forty percent. Unless I if I'm wrong, you let me know lah. So it's actually we should reduce this one. We should really reduce this one. Um, this one Malaysia don't use. If you say Malaysia use fifty percent, this one is good lah. Hydroelectric. If let's say you say Malaysia use sixty percent, this one. But um, I don't think so. You need to Google check lah. Now now I'm teaching much, so I cannot Google check. Okay, Bakun hydroelectric water is very good. Tun Gujafa energy natural gas. Uh, so this one use natural gas this one is to make electric energy uh, so that the electric energy can um, go into your house and then we have Sudan Azan Shah power plant using coal this is the main 40% and uh, this one THH biofuel using biomass uh, this is good because this is renewable and diesel is non-renewable okay process of generating electric how to make electric okay how to make electric first you need to use a uh, 
magnet. You need to use a magnet, and by using this magnet, we can produce electric. This one is using a dynamo, la, huh? dynamo like in the bicycle you use, then you cycle, cycle, got electric or hydroelectric. Um, most of the electric is produced in this way. Actually, all, right? all electric is produced in this way. Okay, so how to do this electric? Okay, this is a very difficult topic, uh, so that's why I'm struggling to teach how to produce electric. Um, the flow of the induced current is called LED. Okay, the crank of the generator, the current is known as induced current. Okay, how to make electric? Okay, first thing we need to know, magnet got magnetic field. Okay, so let me draw the magnetic field. Every magnet got magnetic field. You know magnetic field or not? Let's say I draw a magnet, north and south. So the magnetic field will go like that. Correct or not? Something like this lah. It will go like that, like that. And this one will go like that. Something like that. Lah, huh? This is the nicely lah, huh? you find Google the, there's a nicer picture of the magnetic field in the magnet. So what we want to do is we want to cut the magnetic field because each time you cut the magnetic field, it will produce electric. So let's see this one. Uh, magnetic field like you move up and down when there is a certain changes in the magnetic field a metal or what we actually produce electric okay we actually produce the electric if you want to move the uh, interfere with the magnetic field so how to interfere with the magnetic field okay one of the way is the movement of the wire which cause the magnetic field to be cut so a connecting wire or a solenoid is moved rapidly to the space of the magnetic pole and induced current this is electric lah, huh? is produced in the connecting wire or solenoid flow from the galvanometer so what you do is you put this one a connecting wire you move up down up down up down up down up down when you move up down up down up down actually you are cutting the magnetic field then this is the magnetic field you cut it so there is the re induced current is the electric so you got the electric but you don't say electric you say induced current because we see that the magnetic field actually is from north to south here to here eh north to south are correct okay so when you move up down up down up down you are cutting the magnetic field which produce the electric so they use the word this topic is very big a uh, huge topic uh, they cram everything into one page uh, so it's so difficult to teach why they want to say current they don't want to say electric as you know electric is divided into two when tmb bill come to you they will calculate the electric in terms of voltage and current ampere so when you buy your charging phone toy say uv3 ampere 5 watt 3 ampere fast charge usually is um, I don't know 10 watt 3 ampere something like that fast charging phone is 40 watt you use watt times ampere fast charging phone like my phone is using 15 watt because I know is 3 ampere my phone is using 3 ampere plus 5 watt so my charging phone is 15 watt so when I buy my, because I know this thing, when I buy power bank or I buy charger, I, I know I need to buy 15 watt. I no need to buy very expensive charger. I no need to buy a very cheap charger because I know how to calculate my phone charger watt by using ampere and current, current and watt. 
But I'm not going to explain the current and what. But one thing you need to know is electric is when you come electric to your house, you must have these two voltage and current. So they use current. Current is the thing that flow through the thing. Current flow how fast it flow. If I'm not mistaken, how fast it flow. If the high current means more faster to go one round. Depend on what current you are in. Voltage means how big the thing go. The electric, uh, they carry the small electric or big electric. So if you carry bigger electric, then higher volt. Smaller electric, smaller volt. Current is the speed. The faster it go to your place there, more current also more speed. Lah. Okay, something like that. So we know that um, if I cut the magnetic field, it will produce current. Or another way to do this is movement of magnet. So just now we see a solenoid. This is a solenoid. You need to know what is a solenoid. Either you move the wire like this one, you are cutting the magnetic field, or you move the solenoid. Move the solenoid means same lah. Instead of moving the thing, this also is a wire. Sorry, solenoid also is the wire. So they turn it. Why you want to turn it? Because when you turn it, got more wire. So when you cut, more magnetic field is cut. So of course, I will say this one is better. What you can see is better. I, there is more current to cut because there are more wire. More wire, when you it's a quarter, you cut maybe 10 lines. So you produce more current. This one only one wire, so you only produce one wire energy. Okay, or you don't want to move the wire, you move the magnet. Also, the same thing you move the magnet, for example, you move the magnet up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So, by doing that, you're also cutting the magnetic field, which actually it will produce electric or current. Or you want it to be more successful, you can use it on solenoid. Solenoid means something you, you put the wire a lot and you move the magnet up, down, up, down, up, down. So actually it will produce more electric. Why it produce more electric? Because more magnetic field are cut. So how to know this? By looking at the galvanometer to see the the thing lah, huh? the ampere, the voltage or the ampere. So it will deflect. Deflect means it will go front or go back lah. Deflect lah, it will move lah. Huh? So you just do, 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 do. the thing will move. Okay, so I think I will teach until here. Um, of course, this is not a good thing. I mean, not a good thing because it don't produce that much of um, energy because you are using your hand. It don't produce a lot of energy. So the better way to produce energy is this one. Later we will learn this. Uh, how to make it turn faster to make more energy and um, instead of you move up, down, up, down, the actually the current go front, back, front, back, front, back. We don't want the electric to go like that. We don't want to like the the current go go in front, then go behind, go in front, then go behind. We, we don't want that. We want the current just go in front. So that's why they do this thing. So it's a very difficult topic. And this topic I taught at Form 5, Physics, IGCSE. And now they are putting at Form 3. So, hey. This is uh, form, yeah, they are putting at form 3, so this is quite tough lah, huh? So, never mind, we will go step by step. So, if no question, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoy it, and any information or regarding the, the sources of energy in Malaysia, if I say wrong, then you just put in the comment below. If I'm not mistaken, the sources Malaysia indeed is... I think more than 50%, 60% is not renewable energy. So we should improve on it. So that's it for this video. Thank you and bye-bye.